Have you ever seen a landscape completely transformed after a major flood or landslide? It might look like pure destruction, but what's really happening is a powerful and sometimes brutal form of ecological reset. Today, we're diving deep into how these massive natural events don't just destroy, but actually reshape our world. Let's start with the ground beneath our feet. When a flood roars through or a landslide tears down a hillside, it carries away tons of soil. This isn't just dirt, it's the foundation of life. The immediate effect is devastating for plants. Their roots are exposed and the nutrient-rich topsoil they depend on is washed away. This can wipe out entire plant communities in a matter of hours. Long-term, the area struggles to recover. The new exposed soil is often infertile, meaning only the toughest pioneer species can take root. This dramatically reduces biodiversity, as the specialized plants that once thrived there can no longer survive. It can take decades, even centuries, for the soil and the plant life to return to what it once was. Now think about what happens to all that displaced soil and debris. It has to go somewhere, and that's usually into our rivers and streams. This massive influx of sediment, what scientists call an increased sediment load, completely changes the aquatic environment. The water becomes murky, blocking sunlight and suffocating aquatic plants. This lack of light and oxygen is a death sentence for many fish and invertebrates. The sediment can also physically alter the riverbed, filling in deep pools where fish hide and breed, and smothering the gravel beds where they lay their eggs. The entire food web can collapse. Over time, the river might carve a new path, creating new habitats like sandbars, but the immediate shock to the system is immense. This brings us to a fascinating concept called ecological succession. After a disaster strips the land bare, it's not the end of the story. It's the beginning of a new one. Life is incredibly resilient. First, those hardy pioneer species I mentioned earlier, like certain grasses or shrubs, start to colonize the barren land. They are tough, don't need rich soil, and grow fast. As they grow and die, they begin to create a new layer of organic matter, slowly rebuilding the soil. This process paves the way for other, larger plants to move in. Eventually, shrubs and small trees appear, followed by larger, slower-growing trees. This gradual, predictable change in the species structure of an ecological community over time is succession. A disaster effectively hits the reset button, sending the ecosystem back to an earlier stage of this process. It's a powerful reminder that nature is in a constant state of change and recovery. So, while the immediate aftermath of a flood or landslide is one of loss, it also triggers a long, slow process of rebirth and transformation. These events sculpt our mountains, redirect our rivers, and determine which species thrive. They are a raw, powerful force of change that has shaped our planet for millions of years. Understanding this helps us see the bigger picture that even in destruction, there's a cycle of renewal at play. What are your thoughts on this? Have you ever witnessed a landscape recovering from a natural disaster? Share your experiences in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and if you found this interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dives into the world around us. See you next time.